Hi, my name is Elizabeth Fenn. I'm a curriculum designer at Dreambox Learning. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about some exciting new improvements that we've made to our classification lessons. Um, the classification lessons fall under Dreambox Learning units in grades three and four. And those units are classifying geometric figures and classifying polygons in grade three and then classifying geometric figures in a hierarchy and classifying polygons in a hierarchy under grade four. So I will be talking to you about the improvements that we've made while I show you examples of those improvements in one of our classification lessons. So let me go ahead and get that pulled up for you. Okay. So the first improvement I want to talk to you about is the improvement we've made to the interface that just applies to the screen the students see and the tools that they can interact with. Um, what we've done is we've simplified the virtual manipulatives for students, which has resulted in easier and more intuitive interface for creating diagrams and seamlessly moving objects. Before it was kind of clunky and it was a little bit difficult for students to figure out. So we've made a, a huge improvement to these. We've really built a new interface from the ground up. Um, we got a lot of feedback from students that indicated that they found the old interface confusing and hard to use. So it's especially exciting to be using feedback directly from students to improve their learning experience. And as you can see, it's super easy to manipulate and move objects. And it's very clear to me as the user where that object is going to land. Like if I hover over the rhombi circle, it highlights so I know it's going to go into the diagram. Um, the second improvement that I want to talk to you about is an improvement we've made to the instructions in these lessons and the feedback that students get. Um, students were often getting feedback that was confusing. Uh, it would say something needed to be changed in the diagram, but it wasn't specific and it didn't use the academic vocabulary that a student might need in order to make sense of why those changes needed to be made. So we've updated the instructions and feedback to provide more specific information and academic vocabulary in very key situations to really drive home that learning and understanding for them. Um, I'll go ahead and show you the instructions right now. You'll hear the audio play as long as, as well as be able to read the instructions on the screen. Classify these objects according to their attributes by moving as many of them as you can into the diagram. So those are the instructions. That's pretty clear to me what I need to do. I'm gonna go ahead and get a wrong answer so we can also hear some of that specific feedback that we've made improvements to. These objects should be moved. I'll give you one example. A rectangle does not belong in the rhombi category. A rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles. This is different from rhombi which have exactly four congruent segments. So first we saw which objects needed to be moved regardless of if they were in or out of the diagram. And then we got a very specific example with the academic vocabulary I needed as a student to understand why the rectangle doesn't belong. I got the names of the shapes, a rectangle, and then why is a rectangle not a rhombi? So I will move that out. This type of object is called an obtuse trapezoid. An obtuse trapezoid does not belong in the rhombi category. And then I got more academic language, helping me understand the name of this shape, and it's not a rhombi. So I will go ahead and click done and got that right. Press next when you're ready to move on. So here you can see we give students a chance to really review their work so that to make sure that they understand before they move on. So 
Next, I will talk about our third and final improvement that we've made to these lessons. Uh, we worked on improving the learning outcomes for these lessons. Um, after looking at student play data and student and teacher feedback, what we decided we needed to do was to update the tasks that students are asked to complete in order to reduce the total number of objects to classify, as well as creating tighter category relationships. The reason for this was that we found that some of our lessons were overly complicated and they were penalizing students who really did understand the fundamentals of the concept, but because the lesson was so complicated, they weren't able to pass. So we revised some of our lesson levels and we targeted those lessons where student performance seemed especially poor to focus on the most critical elements of the mathematical ideas. So that concludes my brief overview of the improvements we have made to our classification um, lessons. I encourage you educators to go in and try some of these lessons out. You can access them through the creating an assignment feature on your teacher dashboard. Um, encourage your students to play them if they have them available in their lesson choosers and let us know what you think. Thank you and have a great day.